Let's begin our discussion on the concept of resonance. Resonance structures. More than one possible way we can see a three-dimensional structure in geometry. This is the Lewis structure we would be able to draw for the molecule called ozone. Ozone, of course, is O3. So we have an atom of oxygen. We have the diatomic molecular form. And here we have in the atmosphere a molecule known as ozone. If we think about the Lewis structure of ozone, O3, Oxygen lives in group six. There's six valence electrons, so we know that three of them would give us 18 bonds or 18 dots as we try to manipulate and draw our structure. Knowing that oxygen will be the central atom, we'll start drawing the oxygen, and we'll connect back to the center with the other oxygens, and that shows us we've used one, two, three, four to connect back to the central. So that gives us 14 remaining. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 more dots are used to fill the octets on everybody but the central atom. So those last two dots get placed on the central atom, giving us no dots left, but we can clearly see we don't have eight on the central atom, so that's our clue that we're going to need a multiple bond. Now this is a completely symmetrical picture, so absolutely it wouldn't matter which one I grabbed to bring to the central. I have to pick one or the other. If I erase and make this particular set the double bond, I come up with one possible structure. However, Equally lovely is to pick the other choice. It's a different atom, so I'm not just spinning it in space and, and creating the same molecule, but if I were to have selected the other molecule, I would have ended with O double bond O, single bond O, attached to the other atom which is a completely different looking atom. So what we're saying is this is the second possible correct answer. Now with this particular structure, how do I know if it is a double bond to the right, single to the left, or perhaps a double to the left and a single to the right? And the answer is it's both. It's not one or the other, but it's a hybrid of both pictures. Now let me mention something we talked about a little earlier in this lesson. Uh, we talked about bond length. We know that double bonds would be shorter than a single bond. So if indeed we had a molecule that we could get out our little imaginary ruler stick and measure the distance between the nuclei of this oxygen to oxygen, it would be a longer distance between them than we would find in this particular bond between O double bond O. We'd have a shorter bond length. We could manipulate that little imaginary ruler and measure both, both uh, directions, and one definitely would be shorter than the other. That would be evidence that we had a double bond and a single bond coming from the central atom. But friends, something quite different is true. When we measure the bond length of that ozone molecule, they are exactly identical bond lengths. They lie somewhere between the length of a single bond and a double bond. Therefore, the molecule is perfectly symmetrical. Look at the electron cloud distribution with this colored picture. The oxygens on either side of the central atom indeed exhibit the same electron cloud distribution. This molecule is nonpolar in terms of this particular region. So what have we learned? The oxygen to oxygen bond in either direction is not a single, it's not a double, but it's somewhere between them. The bond length is identical in both directions. This molecule exhibits resonance. 
Both OO bonds are the same in length. Both have oxygens that have half of the charge. So they're equally distributed. This molecule is perfectly symmetrical with respect to those bond lengths. So if it's not a double bond, it's not a single bond, it must be a hybrid. It's known as resonance, that the truth lies between the double and the single bond, that it goes evenly in both directions. So let's discuss that term resonance. If one Lewis structure cannot accurately depict a molecule such as ozone, it's said to exhibit resonance. We use multiple structures, as known as resonance structures, to describe the molecule. If we consider the ozone molecule, we have the central atom, and going off in one direction would be a double bond to single, or perhaps it's going to the single to double. Now I'm not just taking this and flipping it in space, but I'm actually attaching the double bond to a completely different atom. We've exhibited resonance. And what you're going to see is a double arrow pointing to both structures, and that is going to denote that they are both equally valid structures. Draw the two structures in resonance for ozone. We need to draw a central atom with its lone pair of electrons, making that area partially negative. Keep in mind that this is the uh, polar area, those exposed electrons. But that the distribution of electron cloud is exactly the same in both directions here. This molecule exhibits resonance. We separate both correct structures with a double arrow. When we do that, showing both correct structures, we're showing the term resonance. Both are valid and correct. It says just as blue and yellow come together to form green, the synthesis of green is of blue and yellow, we can consider resonance structures in the same fashion. Ozone is a synthesis of two resonance structures. It is a hybrid of both. Now when I was drawing these as a student, my professor showed me this. And I've seen it in multiple places as well, but just not this chemistry book. So I'm going to share it anyway. I have my central atom with two lone pairs. And I place the two dots on these oxygens. modeling what I have up here. But instead of seeing a double bond single, or a single going to double, what we tend to see is a dashed line representing the hybrid bond. And it's going in both directions. And what that means is that I have a delocalized bond. that the electron pair that's being shared between these oxygens sometimes is found here, but sometimes, in an equal amount of time, it's found going in this direction. It is delocalized. It is not concentrated in one specific region, but found across a broader area between both of the atoms bonded to the central atom. A delocalized bond, one that exhibits resonance. The term resonance, it says, in truth, the electrons from the second bond in truth, the electrons from the second CO bond and the double bonds below do not always sit between the carbon and oxygen, but rather move among the two oxygen and the carbon. They are not localized, but rather delocalized. Now this slide would have made better sense, and I should have started with the structure first. So let's go ahead and fill this part in, localized, but not, but rather are delocalized. Let's take a picture of what we've got here. We've got a molecule, polyatomic ion, carrying a negative charge. We've got carbon in the center, oxygen, oxygen, and a hydrogen. 
HCOO negative 1. And if we were to draw the structure, we would see we have two possible directions to place the double bond. One possible direction is going to either of the two oxygens. So which one is correct? Well, the answer is they're both correct. So we need to draw in the two possible resonance structures for the polyatomic ion. This polyatomic ion has a name. It's called formate. Might be an unfamiliar name. It's an organic polyatomic ion, HCOO negative 1. Carbon, with its four valence electrons, we'd see that it has a formal charge of 0. Hydrogen has one valence electron. One minus one has a formal charge of zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons assigned to this particular oxygen. Six minus seven gives me a formal charge of negative one. One, two, three, four, five, six. This oxygen has a formal charge of zero. So this is a very valid picture. Formal charges remained the same. In the second picture, I'm just now placing the double bond onto the other oxygen, both equally valid structures. Notice how the formal charge matches the charge of the polyatomic ion, also a very good sign that you've drawn them correctly. Notice we have the double arrow saying both structures are indeed correct. There are two possible correct answers for the Lewis dot structure known as formate. The truth of it matters is that there is not necessarily a double bond in one direction or a single bond in the other, but the answer lies between. Keep in mind that these would have identical bond lengths. Identical bond lengths. So if I were thinking about bond length, carbon single bond longest, carbon double bond shortest, and this hybrid, the delocalized bonding, and that's kind of a dash line there, is in between it, isn't it? The longest is the single, shorter than that is the double, but this hybrid bond, this delocalized bond, is at a bond length that lies between the double and the single bond. It exhibits resonance. The resonance simply says we have a delocalized electron pair being shared between the central atom and two of its attached atoms. In this case, both are oxygens. So something that exhibits resonance, two identical possible answers, both giving me the same formal charge, the direction of the oxygen to the right or down below is an equally valid choice. Two possible correct answers. This molecule exhibits resonance. Let's model one more. The molecule benzene. C6H6. Now let's extend the page and we'll draw this together. C6H6 is a molecular molecule called benzene. When you get to organic chemistry, this indeed is a very, very important molecule. Carbon lives in group 4A. It has four valence electrons, but there's six of them in this structure, so it will contribute 24 dots. Hydrogen lives in group 1A, but I see there's six of them, so I see it will have six dots. So the total number of electrons is 30. 30 valence electrons in this particular structure. 30 dots, no more, no less. Benzene is a cyclic structure. So in other words, one benzene connects to the next in a cyclic structure. So draw this in with me. Hexane, hex, so a six-sided structure. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons bonded in a cyclic structure. How many electrons did we use? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six single bonds, so we've used 12 electrons. That leaves us with 18 more. 
what we're told to do then is to take each hydrogen and attach it to make a symmetrical molecule. Each of the carbons getting a hydrogen. And how many have we used? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Six dots remaining. Where do we place them? Well, it might make sense to place each electron on one of the carbons. That creates a symmetrical molecule, correct? So I have no dots left, but unfortunately that gives an odd number of electrons to each of these carbons, doesn't it? So I have a, a lonely electron on this carbon, a lonely electron on this carbon. What I'm starting to see, one possibility is a double bond here, double bond here, double bond here. Notice how I'm alternating double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, all the way through that cyclic structure. Alternating single, double, single, double. So one possible correct answer was to connect as I did in green between these two particular carbons. But what if I change color? Instead of connecting these two, what if I had drawn them here from this carbon to this carbon? So let me just quickly redraw. Draw this with me. Another cyclic structure. We have our hydrogens attaching back to the carbons. That was not very neat. Try it again. So we ending up with hydrogen and try and squeeze that on the screen, hydrogen. We decided since we had six dots left, each of those carbons in the cyclic structure would get a dot. Now the last time I chose to put them here, let me change color. Suppose now I'm going to connect them here, alternating bonds. Now the double bonds lie between the carbons from this structure that were once originally singles. They are indeed different from one another, but equal. What is the truth of the matter lie? Is that they're not necessarily double, single, double, single, but if you were to measure the bond angle of every one of these bonds in this cyclic structure, they are all equal in distance. lying somewhere between the double and the single bond. This molecule exhibits resonance. Now one of the most common ways you see a benzene ring drawn, one, two, three, four, five, six, that represents the carbon backbone. See what I've done? One, two, three, four, five, six. And to indicate that the double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond could be drawn in this fashion, we might see it this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, or you might see it alternating this way. Equal and identical correct answers. Now how do we show both at the same time? You'll often see benzene drawn with a circle inside. Alternating double single bonds, all of equal length. And that equal length, a little bit longer than a double bond, but shorter than the single bond. It lies between the two. Benzene exhibits resonance. And this is the structure that they had drawn for us up here. Carbon alternating, single double, single double, giving us a resonance structure, showing the two possible benzene rings, and at the end showing equal bond lengths by placing a circle in the center. Molecules that exhibit resonance, more than one possible correct answer, signifying we have a delocalized bond. The delocalized bond tells us that they're all equal lengths.